Welcome back to the Dendy Doucette channel. It's difficult and there's no real adequate way to describe the feeling of picking up a rifle I ordered about two years ago. After driving 30 miles into the mountains, we arrived at a snowed in cabin with wood smoke issuing from the chimney. Our friend the gunmaker greeted us with his signature, hey buddy. The way he says buddy usually rolls off slow as if hinted with some kind of hospitality, as if he was indeed your old friend. He offers hot coffee, he packs his pipe, and the talk of guns and history begins. A little less than half a year ago, July 1st, I dropped my barrel off to one of the most renowned gun makers in the region. He prefers to remain anonymous. Some of you might know who he is, and if you do, please leave his name out of the comments. The man's an artist. His humble, remote, hand-built cabin is his studio. All of his rifles are hand-built, hand-carved, hand-engraved, and hand-oiled. His rifles and pistols have showed up in multiple Hollywood productions, and you've seen three or four of his fine rifles in the flintlock videos here on this channel. I had roughly two years to decide and choose the style and the maker I wished to go with in the pattern of my long rifle. I settled on Jacob Dickert. How often have you heard the phrase, the gun that won the West, or perhaps the gun that won World War II, in reference to either perhaps the Winchester lever actions in the West, or the Garand for World War II. There are even other catchphrases for the great equalizer, or God made men, Samuel Colt made them equal. Ever since I learned of the gunmaker, Jacob Dickert, I became enamored with his rifles and the role they played in American history. There should easily be a phrase, quote, Dickert rifles, the guns that change the course of human events, unquote. Is that far-fetched? I don't think so. Perhaps the humble German immigrant, devout Moravian, was so very humble and quiet that he shied away from any historical attention or association with great accomplishments where his works were pivotal in their role. The hard-working Lancaster gunsmith, unbeknownst to him, would have an everlasting impression on this continent and thus the world. Jacob Dickert rifles were ordered several times before and during the course of the American Revolution. He produced rifles from the time of the French and Indian War, the Revolution, the early years of the new nation, and the War of 1812. Dickert rifles are credited as the rifles carried by the men who turned the tide in the Revolution at the Battle of Kings Mountain where British Major Ferguson was killed and his troops defeated. A Dickert rifle is the only surviving rifle known to have been at the Alamo, and Dickert rifles are recorded to have been given to early makers of fur trade era rifles to copy or make in a more affordable fashion. The Dickert rifle repelled the French, freed a people from British tyranny, defended a young nation from foreign insult, expanded westward with free trappers, and fought Santa Ana in Texas. There is no tool of liberty, no fashioned steel, carved marble, written scroll that embodies the tenacity and vigor or American liberty and our willingness to kill for freedom like the Dickert rifle. This is why I chose to have myself a Dickert, the greatest rifle ever to grace God's green earth. It is likely that I will rarely hunt with a centerfire rifle ever again. So tune in next time when we've got smoke puffing out of the barrel and hopefully we're ringing some steel out of the distance.
I'd rather build a an English gun basically than anything. You think? Now this is an old catalog. I don't know how much it went up. 